Hi guys, welcome back to part three of the Bantam build. There were a few issues in part two, if you've not seen it, go and have a look, uh, mainly about parts. And when I left you, I was starting to look at the side panels and attaching them to the frame, and I couldn't work out how they went. Um, I've now worked it out, and the reason I couldn't work it out was I was missing parts again. So they're on the bench, let's have a quick look, and you'll see what I'm on about. We had the battery tray and the two inners. I was missing and found that which sits across the back. It's quite pockmarked as you can see, but it'll have to do. Uh, which sits across the back of the two inner side panels spacing them apart. But I then discovered that all this, and we'll go to the bike in a second and fit it. Is held together by through bolts and spacers and I was missing the through bolts and I was also missing the spacers. The two that you saw last time are for the air filter to space the air filter out. So I had to make them up and luckily I found a bit of aluminium tube which uh, wasn't quite the right bore size but I managed to drill them out successfully And by doing some uh, quick calculations, the only thing I could go off was to assume that the whole system was parallel to that. And the fact that the replacement bolt on one of the websites said it was six inches long, which is that, which all appears to be all right. So a quick calculation in millimeters, although it's a British bike, I find it easier to work in millimeters, left me with uh, that as the appropriate size for the spaces. So we'll go across the bike and see if it works. Right, as I said, the battery box has to fit there like that. So we'll put that in place first with a bit of grease. Apologies for getting in your way. This uh, threaded bar is not quite the perfect size, but it's going to have to do because it's all I've got. And I forgot to mention, the reason I'm doing all this is apart from the bolts, stupid wasn't it, apart from the bolts, uh, nothing is in stock anyway. Spacers, etc, etc, I can't find them anyway. So yet more problems getting the right bits. Right. So the washer to spread the load. A spacer. Another washer. Oh, done that one. And then, in theory, the battery box should mount. Like so. Now, that's reasonably close, I think. But just in case, the reason I fitted the additional washers is if I have made a millimetre or two's error, I can uh, move the washers about to square it up. So I'll just turn it off for a second while I fit the other side, and then we'll fit the bit at the back and we'll get a rough idea whether it all works. Right, there we go. That seems, uh, that seems pretty good. It's not fully tightened yet because the bracket here obviously has to sit in relation to the mudguard looking at it. So I'll wait till I've got the mudguard ready to go on, which we'll do shortly. And also the, the two studs here, where it sits at the back, are also mudguard related. But basically it's in place and it looks square. So that will do. So I need to find the mudguard and perhaps we should put the engine in just to get it out of the way. I've also fitted the pillion footrest plates on both sides. I painted the spaces therein and so that's all tight. 
I won't be fitting pill in rests, but this all forms part of the structure at the back of the frame, so I thought about it fitting. Uh, right, so I'm pretty certain I have engine plates, and I think I have identified engine bolts. It's whether it's worth fitting the engine now, or what we have of the engine now. Um, I think the answer to that is yes. Right, I found what looks like the engine plates from the parts book. And I have four bolts which conveniently fit through the four mounting holes, so I'm assuming that's them as well, about the right length. So I think I'll put the plates on one side loosely, which can be something to aim at, and then we'll try and get the engine in. Give it a go. Now the engine I've messed about with already before I started doing YouTube. I'll go through that in one second once I've got this in place. doesn't want to go. Uh, let me just, I'm going to have to get something to tap this with. I don't know whether it's because it's been painted or whether these are slightly tight anyway. I don't know, one second. Because really that should just drop cleanly in there. Get a screwdriver very close. Right, I moved it uh, off the stand for a second. Right. One in. I get something on the back. Okay, so I'm two bolts short then. Well, I should have to go and look for the missing bolts. But you get the idea. There's one more to go in there and one more to go through the bottom there. I'll have to go and find them. But we're in. So while we're here, before I started doing YouTube, when I first got this project, the first thing I did was pull the engine apart. So it's had a rebuilt crank with a new rod, big end bearing, so new main bearings, all the seals, gaskets, the gearbox was fine, so new clutch plates, new primary chain, lots and lots of new bits basically. So I'm hoping this is ready to go. The only slight problem is although it's a D14 engine, it's not the one in the logbook. So it's also been changed at some time. So the plan for the engine now is I need to get uh, the rebore done, which I've mentioned before. I've got the cylinder head. I need an inner case because my one's broken. In fact, that's broken. I didn't notice that. 
Right, well, I'm going to have to fix that as well. Um, yeah, I need to trim that and repair that, which I should have done when it's off. I don't know why. I didn't, but anyway, I didn't. Chain damage, obviously, not uncommon, I believe, on these. Uh, the matching case with the clutch adjustment is damaged, so I need to find one of them. That'll just get blanked. Stop water getting in. And then, as far as ignition goes, the rotor and stator are completely useless. So the price of buying them is similar, by the time we bought them, points, all the rest of it, is similar to an Electrex World system, which will sit here and do all, all the stuff. So I'll probably go with Electrex World and convert to 12 volt at the same time. But that's in the future, there's lots more to do yet. For the minute, I need to try and find out where these bolts have gone. So I shall go and have a rummage again. Right, I found some bolts in my uh, general parts box, which are word. So that's okay. So we're in, tight, all the way around, engine's done. So I think next we have to try and find the rear mudguard so we can finalise the positioning of this. And after that, I'm not sure. Let's find a mudguard. But before we do, I've just found the uh, footrests lying about. So go mad and stick them on as well, shall we? Right, I don't think that will interfere with getting that case on when I need to put it on, to be honest. In fact, I'll just find a damaged one. This is one that came with the bike, and as you can see, it's got a chunk missing there to match that chunk there. Now, I don't mind blanking that off because that's relatively easy. I'll just warm that up and straighten it a little bit and uh, use some sort of bonding agent to put a plate in there. But it's a lot harder getting it to join up the mating surface. I've got no alloy welding equipment or ability. So, yeah, so that'll go on easily without the footrest. Okay, it's a shame that. But anyway, that should be straighter. But again, it's not an issue really. Right, so at least I'll go with the foot footrest. So I'll put the other footrest on on this side. And then we'll have a look at the uh, rear mudguard. Right, I've dug out the uh, both mudguards. We'll start with the back one. It's obviously been a proper sport guard because it's chrome under this paint. But obviously it's painted because it must have been very rusty. It has the alloy rear light and the number plate holder has rotted away. Somebody's, I think somebody's cut it to try and get rid of the, uh, the rust. The rear light unit may be stable, but that depends on the bolts underneath, which we'll look at in a minute. But, as well as the rust, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but as well as the rust, it's split on both sides. And around the mounting holes, it's delaminating and swollen. And all the mounting bolts for things like that are really, really cruddy. I mean, I'll try cutting the nuts off. The uh, inside of it has uh, rotted away. I'm assuming that was a guard of some sort for maybe wiring. I don't know, just reinforcement for the holes. And that's rotted through completely. So, let me just show you the front one. It too was covered in white paint, which I've got rid of. And I thought, well, it's rusty, but I might be able to rescue it. But then I noticed, and again, I don't know how well I see it, it's split from there to there with rust, and from there to there with rust. 
and there, and it's just starting to go along there. On top of which, it's dented there, there, and flattened. I don't know if you can get it, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but if you compare there to there, that's dented, and that's flattened and flared out. So, all in all, the mud guards are a bit of a disaster zone. Now, unfortunately, yet again, I can't get the bits. This guard was fitted to lots of BSAs that had the heavyweight forks. So the B25 Starfire thing, the B44 singles, or the, the road going versions of the B44 singles. And they were remanufactured. But everyone is out of stock again, and no one has any idea when they're going to come back into stock. And the rear mudguard appears to be a one-off from what I can gather. I will continue to search. But again, no one has chrome rear guards for Bantam Sports. So the options are, I abandon the original guards altogether and just try and find some sort of alloy blade that I can make to fit, although I'm not entirely sure how well that would look. Or I do what this owner's done, and I, I clean everything off, de-rust it, acid etch it, and paint it, having welded up the defects and filled, well, it's filled as many of the uh, bumps and grinds as I can. It's going to be difficult doing them all. I mean, that, that front, is that the front? Yeah, I suspect that's the front. That, that's really badly uh, rippled. I might be able to get it back, but I don't know. So yes, unfortunately, I think someone's had a go at it before and stretched the metal. In fact, yes, you can see hammer marks there. Um, so, I think the first step will be to see if I can get all these bolts off, get the paint stripped, and just see if I can do anything to save these. If anyone knows of any alloy blades that are uh, usable on a Bantam Sport, please let me know ASAP before I go mad sorting all this out. Before we leave the top of mudguards, I forgot I found the three stays for the front mudguard. They're pretty rusty, but I think usable. I don't mind if they're slightly uh, pockmarked under the paint of this bit of character. Again, stuff like that's going to need cutting off because it's rusted solid. So there we go. I suppose if I do paint them, I'd probably go for white, like whoever's had this before, maybe with a contrasting flash of what the uh, tank colour is going to be. Anyway, we need to try and get this off in one piece, because otherwise I'm going to have to buy a new one of them, and we'll get the other nuts and bolts off as well. Right, onward and upward.